Hi, my name is Mike Houston. I'm a product line manager with Watt Stopper in charge of commercial dimming. I want to talk to you a little bit today about digital lighting management and the dimming and daylighting functions that we've got built in. One of the first things I want to get across is there are a lot of features, a lot of concepts, a lot of things that are adjustable in digital lighting management, and I'm going to walk you through a few of them so you have some familiarity with them. The first thing I want you to understand about our keypads, which I'm showing you here, is the way they operate really depends on how you program them. They have default plug-and-go functionality out of the box, but you can change that. The buttons come in basically three different types. We have rocker paddles, we have load buttons, and we have scene buttons. The devices that I'm showing you right now are devices that come defaulted as load buttons. The behavior of a load button is slightly different than a scene button. Load buttons turn loads on and off, one or more loads. The LED will be lit anytime any of the loads that it's bound to is on. If I press the button again, it will turn those loads off. Okay? So our one button, two, three, four, and eight button switches all come defaulted as load buttons. Those can be changed to scene buttons. The second button type that I want to br briefly mention here is the rocker paddle. The rocker paddle is basically a dimmer. It comes only on two devices. They're shown on the screen. An LMDM 101 dimmer and an LMSW 105 scene switch. The rocker paddle on the scene switch and the rocker on the dimmer are virtually identical from a DLM standpoint electronically. They raise and lower any loads that they're bound to. They'll turn them on and off and they'll ramp them up and down. That's what they do. The third button type is a scene button. The only device that we have in the line that comes defaulted with scene buttons is the scene switch. It's shown here. And the scene switch has the rocker paddle on the left and four scene buttons on the right. Scene buttons differ from load buttons in that their LED will only be lit when all of the members of the scene are at the exact light level to which they were recorded to that scene. If I change the light level even a little bit, the LED goes out, telling me I'm no longer in that scene. And if I press the scene button again, it recalls the scene. So by default, those buttons are recall only, as opposed to a load button, which is press on, press off, toggle action. The scene buttons can be changed. You can make them load buttons. You can make them recall a scene with the first button press and turn the scene off with the second button press. It's really easy to do, and I'll show you that in a minute. So I've got to talk to you about some concepts, some features, and what the benefit is to you with, with digital lighting management. The concepts I'm going to talk to you about are not our concepts. These are industry concepts, but I just you, we need to have some basic understanding of what they are so that I can help you understand the features that we put into digital lighting management, which will make it much more flexible for your designs. So the first concept I want to talk to you about is this concept of preset level. Preset level, I'll show you kind of an a artist rendition of what preset level works looks like, and then I'll show it to you live on the, on the demonstration here. So what preset level looks like is, turn a load on to 50 percent, you ramp it up and down, and wherever you turn it off, that's now the preset level. Okay? The feature that we're going to give you with digital lighting management is the ability to set a persistent preset level. Let me show you. So over here on the keypad, I'm going to turn on the first dimmer. You can see its LEDs. I'll dim down to 50 percent. Okay? When I turn it off, the preset level, by default, is 50%. That's the last level that the dimmer was at. If I tap it, it comes on to 50%. Okay? That's the preset level. Now, the feature that we're going to give you with digital lighting management is the ability to set a persistent preset level. And what that is, is I'll set a preset level of 50%, and no matter where I leave the load, every time I turn that load back on, it's going to come on to 50%. Okay? So, what this allows you to do is additional energy savings. We've talked about some scenarios where we have in a private office bi-level switching and when we walk in the occupancy sensor turns on load one and load two is manual on. Well what if when load one came on it only came on to 90 percent? You've got an additional 10 percent energy savings out of the box. Preset level is a soft limit so I can always go and get more light. I can press and hold the dimmer and I can raise the lights if I need more light. Okay? The next concept I want to talk to you about is called lamp burn-in. This is still a debated concept, but what this is, there are manufacturers who say that when you're going to dim fluorescent lamps, you first need to burn them in for 100 hours, 12 hours. It's kind of up in the air who's in charge here. Um, interestingly, the main manufacturer of dimming products in the U.S. 
says that you have to burn fluorescent lamps in for 100 hours before you can dim them or you may get shortened lamp life. The funny thing to me is they don't make lamps, this manufacturer. The main three lamp manufacturers do not require 100 hour burn in. Philips says you don't need any burn in. GE and Sylvania recommend 12 hours. There's also a NEMA paper that's out that we have that says you don't need any burn in. Um, but the, the ANC standard for measuring light output, so let's not talk about dimming for a minute, but just for measuring light, accurate light output, says you need to burn the fluorescent and lamps in for 100 hours. So what we're going to offer you with digital lighting management is the ability to set a burn in from 12 hours or 100 hours. Okay? And you'll do that using the LMCT100. It's our handheld remote wireless configuration tool. And we'll just pick the load we want, set the burn in, and those lights will stay on for the duration of that burn in, whether it's 12 hours or 100 hours. Okay, so you need to be really careful about that because the aux sensors won't turn the lights off, the switches won't turn the lights off. The idea is that those lamps burn continuously throughout the burn in period. If you need to stop it, you can take your LMCT100, stop burning, make it zero. Uh, but you can't restart it, you've got to start over because the burn-in hasn't been successful. Okay, the next feature I want to talk to you about is called trip point. This is an interesting, hard to put your finger on, on, on concept. Every manufacturer has to deal with it. Most manufacturers don't let you make the choice. So what trip point is, this is when a switched load participates in a ramp or a fade. So when you take an on-off only load and you want to try and dim it. So why would you do that? There are a lot of conference rooms that I've been in and training rooms that I've been in where most of the main lighting in the, in the room is switched, on off only. And then we've got some perimeter lights that are dimmable, maybe a cove that's dimmable. Okay? In my example here in the conference room, I have this big nice cove light, then I have some recessed down lights and some sconces. It could be that this cove light is switched only. So if I'm in this room and I press my scene for all on, for general meeting scene, everything's on, and now I want to start dimming it. What does that cove light do if it's a switched only load? Does it turn off as soon as I start to dim it? Does it wait till I dim all the way to the bottom and then turn off? What Wastoppers decided to do is set a, a trip point for a switched load at 51%. At 51% the load will be on, at 50 and below the load will be off. But that feature is completely adjustable by you using, again, the LMCT100. You'll notice that I'll refer back to this device a lot. Most of the dimming features, these advanced dimming features that you're going to want to access are available through the LMCT100. So it's a really important tool when you're setting up dimming. So trip point, um, the reasons you would want to adjust it is to, is to choose when in that ramp or fade you want that light to turn off. Okay? In this example that I gave you, if this light, this cove light didn't turn off until I dimmed all the way to the bottom, I wouldn't have much dimming because this is accounting for about 80% of the light in the room. So the decision we've made is, as I start to ramp down this, this room, what's going to happen is the down lights and the sconces will start to dim down. When they get to 50%, that cove light will switch off. And I'll still have the bottom 50% of the down lights that I can adjust. And on the way up, when they get to 50%, the cove light will turn on. Okay? The important thing is it's totally adjustable by you. On the PowerPoint, I've got kind of an artist rendition of what this might look like. And so you'll see on the, on the left a dimmed load and on the right a switch load. And what happens, if you can see this, is when I turn this on at 50%, that the dimmed load is at 50%, the switch load turns off. On, on the way down, it turns off. But the important thing is it's customizable by you. You get to decide.